Tech in 5. Dive into Python with a fun game. Learn in just 5 minutes. Ever wondered how to make a game character jump? Follow me. By the end of this video, you'll learn how to do it. In video game physics, a jump involves an interplay of speed and gravity. Initially, when a character jumps, it gains upward velocity, propelling it off the ground. This initial thrust is crucial for determining the height of the jump. As the character rises, gravity gradually reduces its upward speed. At the peak of the jump, the upward speed momentarily reaches zero, marking the highest point. After this peak, gravity takes over, pulling the character back towards the ground. The downward speed increases due to gravity's constant acceleration, hastening the fall. This entire motion follows a parabolic trajectory, similar to how objects move in real-world physics under the influence of gravity. Balancing the initial jump speed with the gravitational pull is key to creating a realistic and satisfying jump. For example, imagine two characters in a game. One jumps higher than the other because it has a higher initial velocity. Too much speed, and the character will unnaturally soar. Too little, and it barely leaves the ground. Similarly, if a character is jumping on the moon, the gravity pull will be reduced because the moon's gravity is weaker compared to Earth's. This results in a higher jump and a slower fall speed. The beauty of game development is fine-tuning these parameters to craft the perfect jump that feels right for the game's environment and gameplay style. In our game, the player's actions and characteristics are managed by the player class. This class defines not only the size and position of the player, but also handles the jumping mechanics, which are central to our game's gameplay. The player has a set height and width, defined by self.height and self.width. These dimensions determine the size of the player on the screen. We initialize these with player height and player width, constants that can be adjusted to change the player's appearance. The position of the player is represented by self.x and self.y. These variables keep track of where the player is located in the game window, with x indicating the horizontal position and y the vertical. Now, let's dive into the jumping mechanics. The jump speed field is crucial. It sets the initial speed at which the player will move upwards when they jump. Think of it as the jump force of the player. The is jumping flag indicates whether the player is currently in the process of jumping. This is important to prevent the player from initiating a new jump while already in the air. Finally, velocity represents the current speed of the player along the vertical axis. When the player jumps, this velocity initially becomes negative, equal to minus jump speed, causing the player to move upwards. As the player ascends and gravity takes effect, this velocity will decrease until it becomes positive, bringing the player back down. The jump method controls this action. When called, if the player is not already jumping, it sets is jumping to true and assigns the initial negative velocity. This action launches the player upward, starting the jump. In our game, the update method of the player class is where the magic of movement and animation comes alive. This method is called every frame to update the player's state, ensuring a smooth and interactive gameplay experience. When the player is in the midst of a jump, we need to update the player's vertical position and velocity. The velocity is adjusted by gravity, which represents the constant pull of gravity. Initially, this velocity is negative, causing the player to move upwards. However, as gravity is added to it each frame, it eventually reduces the upward speed, stops the ascent, and then starts pulling the player down. The player's vertical position is updated by adding the current velocity to it. When the player is ascending, this reduces the y value since the velocity is negative, and when descending, it increases it as the velocity becomes positive. A crucial part of this process is checking if the player has landed back on the ground. This is determined by checking if the player's y position is at or below the bottom of the screen. Once this condition is met, the player is set back to the ground level and his jumping is set to false, indicating the jump is complete. The draw function is where we bring our player to life on the screen. We'll delve into the details of this function in our next video. For now, let's focus on seeing our player in motion, showcasing the mechanics we've just discussed. Stay tuned for more videos on Tekken 5.